today I'm going to share my homeschool curriculum picks for my pre-K or preschool child. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is part of a series I've been doing here on my channel where I have been sharing our homeschool curriculum picks for the 2022-2023 school year. As you can see, I've got my Mama Shark shirt on because today I'm going to talk all about Ezra, my baby shark loving pre-K slash preschooler. Now, in case you are new around here, hi, my name is Sarah. I am currently homeschooling four kids, my pre-K child, as well as a third, eighth, and ninth grader. And then I also have a two and a half year old toddler running around here as well. We have been homeschooling for just over 10 years now, which does not mean that I feel like I know what I'm doing, but it does mean I have a little bit experience. And just like you, every single year, I am trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together to decide what curriculum is going to work for our family. Now, before we jump in, I do have a couple disclaimers. Uh, just first and foremost, I do not want anything I say in this video to imply that you need curriculum for your preschooler or for your pre-K child because you, you don't especially if they are not showing interest in school yet. In my opinion, for children who are under the age of six, they really only need lots and lots and lots of books read aloud to them, plenty of exposure and time outside, tons of free play, and then taking them alongside you as you are tackling your daily routines. So letting them help you in the kitchen, letting them help you with laundry, taking them with you to the grocery store. Honestly, that is such an education in and of itself. And, and did I mention read lots of books? Because to me, that is just key. So ju just to be clear, I am not advocating for formal education for a child of this age who is not showing interest. But that being said, Ezra is showing interest. He has attended a preschool last year and will be attending again this year. And so the concept of schoolwork is not new to him. And honestly, I am not the type of mama who likes to shoot from the hip. I like structure and rhythms and routines. And I feel like having some intentional curriculum or a framework to do school is just a really helpful tool that allows me to do educational things with Ezra when he shows interest, but I, I have the flexibility to skip it when he's not. So really what I am saying is let your child take the lead at this age, do school when they want to and, and skip it when they don't, don't try to force it. Oh, and one other little disclaimer that I share every time I do any type of video like this. The curriculum that I am sharing today are things that I have chosen for this season in life for this specific child. I am not being prescriptive. I am not telling you that this is the perfect, you know, one size fits all plan for every single pre-K child out there. This is just what I think will work really well for Ezra for this year. All right, so enough of all of that. Let's just jump in. I'm going to share items here subject by subject. I will be sure to put some timestamps down below so that way if you wanna skip or move around in the video, you have the freedom to do so. All right, so let's start with calendar time. This is something a lot of preschoolers are trying to learn and wrap their brain around. I am trying to teach Ezra the days of the week, the months of the year, what time looks like on a calendar. And so for this, you guys know, I love my treasures from Jennifer Board. This was definitely a little bit of an investment piece that I bought for our homeschool a couple of years ago. I have had absolutely no buyer's remorse. It was worth every penny, but it, it, it is a little bit expensive. Uh, we love to use this. Ezra really likes to put the numbers up on the board. He likes to use the different illustrated coins to mark holidays and things like that. So for calendar time, I love our treasures from Jennifer Board, but there are definitely less expensive options out there. Moving on to math or numbers. Now don't let this overwhelm you, but I did purchase, sorry, it still has some of the saran wrap around it. Um, the primer level of math you see but we will only be covering lessons one through eight. We will not go any farther in the book than that. 
The first eight lessons of this level really just cover number recognition and shapes, which is perfect for preschool and pre-K. So this is just a fun curriculum and kind of introduces them to Matthew C, to Mr. Demi, and to videos. If you are planning to use Matthew C in elementary school, I, I think this is a great time to start. I will also pair this with a lot of manipulatives, the ones that come with Matthew C, but then counting bears and different things like that, where we are working on counting, working on number recognition. All right, so let's talk about letters. In preschool or in pre-K, it is really important to start introducing your child to the letters of the alphabet and the different sounds that they make. And so to do this, I am going to use Sing, Spell, Read, and Writes All Aboard. They used to sell this in a workbook. Uh, some of it has been discontinued. On Rainbow Resource, they do sell these loose worksheets. They're already hole punched, so you can just put them right in a notebook. I used this curriculum with all three of my older children, and so I know the songs, I know the games. I honestly, the short vowel song from Sing, Spell, Read, and Write will be stuck in my head in the middle of the night. The pages in here, I'll try to give you just a couple examples. It's like A is for apple, and you're introduced to the letter A written in print as well as in type, which I really appreciate that they include A's like that. It can be a little bit confusing for kids when they start trying to read that A's look very differently. Anyways, uh, there's other worksheets here that go along with this where they are starting to learn how to trace the letter A. You can even color all of these little illustrations and cut them out and decide which of these items starts with the letter A. Alligator, ax, chicken, alphabet, those type of things. And so there are several worksheets in here for every single letter of the alphabet. My goal to start out with is to try to cover one letter of the alphabet every single week. One of the things about this curriculum is you do not have to go in order. If you want to teach the letters of the alphabet maybe in a different order or pair this along with another curriculum, you can skip around in these worksheets or in this workbook very easily. Along the same vein of letter recognition, let's talk about handwriting. And this is something that I have pieced together through the years. I have bought different parts of this curriculum here and there. So j just realize that. But let's talk about handwriting without tears. I purchased this, my first school book for Ezra. It is just a very gentle approach to correct pencil grip, as well as some coloring pages that you can use these little two-sided crayons to color. And then it just shows you some really simple ways to form letters. This book in particular is wonderful to pair along with other items from Handwriting Without Tears. So if you've heard of this company, you've probably heard of their Wet Dry Try, where you use a little chalkboard and you write the letter on there and they will take a wet sponge and wipe it off. Uh, this is just a really fun activity for toddlers. I do love these little itty bitty sponge cubes that you can buy. Again, I got these from Rainbow Resource for a couple of dollars. You could also just use a wet paper towel or your own sponge that you cut up yourself. Another item, and I've talked about these here on the channel before, but I just, I absolutely love them. They are, they are worth the investment are the wood pieces set for capital letters. A few years ago, I also went ahead and bought these laminated cards that you can take the blocks and put them right on top of here. These were definitely a little bit pricey, but in my opinion, they were worth the investment, especially if you're going to be using them with several children, and they have really held up well. I've had several kids use these and love on them very, very roughly, and they've held up really great. The new item that I bought this year, uh, we haven't even opened it, completely yet is from Learning Without Tears, this stamp and see screen. It's just kind of like a magna doodle, but it does come with magnetic kind of like wooden blocks that you can shape the different letters with. So again, this is really great for those kids who are kind of working on those fine motor skills, who are figuring out how to do a pencil grasp. This gives them other ways to recognize and create letters 
even if they're not quite ready to hold a pencil yet. Some other things that you could pair along with that are Play-Doh boards where you roll out Play-Doh into the different shapes of letters. I also recently purchased the wiki sticks where it comes with letter and number boards where you can shape wiki sticks, uh, just like the wax covered string. So those are some other activities that I will pair along with handwriting without tears. And then for art and literature, if you've been around my channel for a little bit, you'll probably recognize this, the Gentle and Classical Preschool. I actually purchased this last year and had intended on using it with my toddler and Ezra, who was then preschool aged, uh, all throughout the school year last year. But because of life circumstances, we just were never able to get to it. It, it stayed on our shelf all school year long. So I am planning on utilizing this this year just because I own it and I, I don't want it to go to waste. So I am planning on using this as our literature guide. I'm going to pair it alongside of the Sing Spell Read and Write letter pages and we will pick a letter of the week and do this, the pages from Sing Spell Read and Write and then we will read the books that go along with that letter. So for the first unit, it's letter L and you would be reading the last stop on Market Street. There are a lot of other things you could do to go along with this. I'm thinking we will probably just do bare bones and try to read the story and do the letter activities. And then also there are some craft options that you could do. So for this one, it is building a string guitar. And so this again, just kind of gives me an idea, something that I don't have to come up with it on my own of a craft project that I could do with Ezra that week if he is wanting to do something in particular. The nice thing about the Gentle and Classical Preschool is that a lot of these items I, I would already have on hand around my house or in my homeschool, and most of the books in this unit are available through our local library. So I really will not have to spend much money in order to use this, and again, it was already on my shelf, so why not? For nature study or science, whatever you would wanna label it, I am planning on using Exploring Nature with Children. Now, this is a curriculum that I'm already planning on using with Ezra's older sister, my third grader, and so I will just take Ezra along as we are working through this. If you're not familiar with this curriculum, it gives you weekly prompts that you can use for nature journaling or a nature walk. There are book suggestions and poetry, all, all kinds of different things you can do week in and week out to study nature right in your backyard. And so this is a wonderful guide. It's not something that I'll have to be a slave to. We, we can pick it up when we want to and shelve it when we don't. But I, I think this will be really fun for him to do alongside of Mariah to study nature. Along that same vein, I've been wanting to buy this book for a while and I, I finally purchased it this year. Big book of science and nature from the Berenstein Bears. Ezra is absolutely a huge fan of the Berenstein Bears. I probably read four, five of their titles every single day right now. It's his favorite book series at the moment. This will be a really easy way to start giving him some exposure to different science themes and topics. Okay, so let's talk about Bible. You guys know that I typically include Bible on these curriculum pick videos, although I don't really consider Bible a subject or part of our homeschool. It is something that we would put into our day and day life, whether we were homeschooling or not, it is part of our family culture. But that being said, Ezra is my early riser in the house. He is always the first one up in the morning, sometimes even before I am. And he loves to get up and come down and sit in the recliner with me while I read my Bible and have my quiet time. And so this is just a really opportune time for me to pull out a picture Bible to read aloud to him. So we will be using the Big Picture Story Bible again this year. This is a Bible that I definitely recommend for toddlers or preschoolers. Uh, even if you've read through it once, I think there's something just really good and powerful about reading through a book over and over and over again with younger kids. It really helps to cement those concepts in their brain. So we're gonna read through this Bible again and I'm just really looking forward to it. Next up, I wasn't really sure how to categorize this. I went ahead and I'm just gonna call it extra activities. You could call it puzzles or problem solving but I wasn't intentional to purchase a few of these games or puzzles for Ezra this year. I got several of these ideas from Timberdoodle. If you're not familiar with their curriculum company, they're really, really good, um, especially for age graded suggestions. I'll link them down below. 
Uh, but the first one I have here is called Bunny Peekaboo. This is a game where it comes with, actually I'll just open it and show it to you. So this comes with a couple different blocks, red, blue, yellow, and a little bunny. And it has cards in here that your child will have to build different challenges with the blocks to play peekaboo with the bunny. So some of them are very simple. You can see here just like the yellow block with the bunny. And then some are a lot more difficult. To me, this almost reminds me as an introduction to like Legos where you are seeing the instructions of how to spatially build something and kind of figuring it out. I have already started playing this with Ezra. He loves it, he really enjoys it. He was able to get through a lot of the easy cards pretty quickly, um, but the medium and more difficult cards definitely take a little bit of time for him. So this is something really fun that I can hand him when I am working with my other kids that's educational, but that he can do pretty independently. Now, I have a few others in this same line. They're from Smart Games. The next one I have here is called Day and Night. Again, the same concept, but on this one, you have a color side that you are following and then a dark side. So you get different prompts to build different things. And then I also bought the Three Little Piggies Deluxe. And I, I, this is what hooked me on these smart games. Ezra loves the three little pigs. Uh, it's one of his favorite stories. And so he is really, really going to enjoy this game and these puzzle challenges. All right, guys, well, that wraps things up. That is all of the curriculum or other activities that I have purchased for Ezra. Please let me remind you that I am not planning to use all of this every single day. In, in my head, kind of the ideal day would look like reading a book from Gentle Classical Preschool, uh, doing nature study outside with Mariah, maybe working on a few letters either with Sing, Spell, Read, and Write, or doing some handwriting with Handwriting Without Tears, and then maybe getting out some counting bears and counting. You know, all in all, those are just five minutes here, 10 minutes there, sprinkled throughout our day but things that I don't have to think about. These are all items that I can put on a pre-K shelf for him and pull as I need to when he wants to do school. If you have not done so already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I am releasing all of these different curriculum picks as part of this series. And here coming up soon, I will also be releasing videos of curriculum wrap up where I'm going to talk through the curriculum that we used last year, what worked, what didn't, and everything in between. You're not gonna wanna miss it. All right guys, well I hope you're having a great week. See you later.